Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Jay and welcome to Simple Church Online. Whether you missed last Sunday, you're checking us out for the first time, or maybe even watching out of state, we're so glad that you're a part of our community. And we're praying today that as you watch, God would use this to bless your life. Enjoy the message. God is up to something, y'all. God is up to something. And my name is Matthew Reed. I kind of skipped that. I'm the journey pastor here, and I'm not supposed to be speaking today. Our lead pastor, Jay, is sick. And to be really honest with you, it doesn't surprise me. I don't know if you guys have picked up on the crazy amount of energy and enthusiasm and beautiful things that God is doing in this family. And I think the devil wants to throw everything he has at us. So not today, Satan. What, I think it was Jody. Jody said, the devil's throwing stuff, but we got a big old catcher's mitt. <laughs> I love me some Jody. God is up to something beautiful. And we've been in this series about, uh, it's called Game Changer, and it's about being a family, about what it really looks like to live in Christian community and to live together. And our anchor passage has been Galatians chapter 6, I think 1 through 10. I'd encourage you, spend some time reading that. It's a, it's a powerful passage. It's, it's kind of what Paul is leaving the church in Galatia with as he's finishing his letter to them. And it's all about life in the Spirit and life together. And I'm going to skip ahead in our series just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be focusing in on Galatians 6, 9 through 10. And actually, before we do that, let's pray together. Uh, Jesus, we need to hear from you today. Holy Spirit, fill my words. Uh, We need to hear from you, God. Anything that's of me, just strike it down. Open all of our hearts and minds to hear you speaking to us today. And may we respond in, in faith and in grace and in courage as we trust all of it to you, Jesus. Thank you for this precious church family. Thank you that we will not be moved. We will not be deterred by anything the enemy throws at us. Speak today, Lord. We're listening to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So Galatians 6, 9 through 10 says this. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. And just leave that up there for a second, Zoe. So let's not get tired of doing good. That means we're already doing the right things, right? We're already on the path that God has called us to. We're already coming together as a family. We're already ministering to one another, taking care of one another, carrying one another's burdens. So let's not get tired of doing what is good because at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. This is a season for us to sow, to sow into our family, to start to sow into our neighborhood that we're in. And at just the right time, God will bring the harvest. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone and especially to those in the family of faith. I love that that's in there. Yeah, we need to shine our light into the world around us. We need to love people well and show them the gospel. But one of the very best ways we can show our community the truth of Jesus is by how we love each other in here, by how we take care of each other in here. Don't lose sight of that. In that word opportunity, I think we get it twisted sometimes. Whenever we have the opportunity, it sounds like I need to go schedule more things and start more programs and do more things for the kingdom. I don't really know that that's what that means. Programs and Bible studies and things can certainly do what we're trying to do here. I think it means more look for the opportunities God brings your way. Be walking in step with the Holy Spirit and whatever God brings your way, whatever opportunities he brings to you, jump into them. It's not so much a jam-pack every minute of every day. We're so American. We're really good at that, aren't we? It's more about walking in step with the Spirit and leaving Him room to move. Now, I'm really curious what I'm going to say today. (laughs) I really don't know, y'all. 
I usually come with five or six pages. This is it, and most of it's scripture. So boom, Holy Spirit, have your way. But I felt really pulled to go to John chapter 13, because what this is, doing good to the family of faith, it's about loving each other. And this command is found throughout scripture. And in John 13, Jesus has just washed the disciples' feet, a beautiful moment of humility and service from the Lord of all creation. And then he says this as they're, they're kind of ending their time together right before his betrayal and arrest. He says this, so now I'm giving you a new commandment because these were faithful Jews. They knew the commandments. Love each other. Just as I've loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. Love each other. That's our best witness is when we love each other. And we get this idea kind of mixed up in our our modern culture because you hear people talking about love an awful lot, and it's kind of one of those princess bride moments, like this word that you keep using, it does not mean what I think you think it means. (laughs) It's not warm fuzzies. We we have warm fuzzies sometimes, right? That's okay. It's it's the love that Jesus showed us. It's, it's that Greek word agape love. It's that sacrificing love because Jesus left everything that he could have and should have had in heaven to come down here to show us love by giving of himself, right? That's the same kind of love that we're supposed to have each other. Not that I am supposed to feel good and happy, warm fuzzies all the time and come to the church to to get my spiritual high and then go on about my business. I'm supposed to pour out myself for you all, family. And we're all supposed to do that for each other. And that's our witness to a watching world. That's how we prove to the world that we are the disciples of Jesus. Years later, the Apostle John wrote one of my favorite books of the whole Bible. It's 1 John. And as he's closing that book, this is kind of a long passage that I'm going to read, but I just didn't know how to cut it down. It's just so good and power-packed. So we're going to read 1 John 4, 7 through 21, and I'll try to break it up a little bit for us. But he says this, dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. That should check us all right there. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Where are my students at? This is real love. This is real love. Can we make that our closing song? Let's just do that. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> this is real love. Not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. That's the foundation of this whole thing. It's the love of Jesus, the love that Jesus has shown us. It's not something that we have to manufacture or figure out how to do. It's already been shown to us. It's already been given to us. We step into that. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. As we step into the love that Jesus has already shown us, as we try to reach out and love one another, his love is perfected in us. Isn't that incredible? His love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love. 
And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we'll not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we're afraid, it's for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. And then don't miss this. We love each other because he first loved us. This whole Christian life together thing, it's response. It's response to the great love that Jesus has already shown. We just step into his love. And then it's not just that we do our best to try to love each other and love the world around us, we do. But more, we're letting the Holy Spirit come and move and have his way to lead us to the opportunities, some which may be totally random, Uh, you gotta go talk to a guy at a quick trip, some that are gonna come from right here in the family, that someone's just gonna be on your heart and you know you're supposed to reach out and maybe try to meet a practical need or just go sit and be with someone. This is how we love each other, but we love because he first loved us. We agape each other because he first agaped us. Did I just make a Greek verb a past tense? I did, Taylor. I did. You never know what's gonna go go down at Simple Church, I tell you what. (laughs) I'm just going to take a drink of water now. (laughs) If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. I know, I don't like it much either. It's hard. (laughs) It's hard. (laughs) And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love God their fellow believers. My friends, this is the word of God. And I don't know what else I can say to that. But here's what I want to encourage us in. This church does a really good job of caring for each other. If I were gonna give this sermon a title, Z, if you wanna use this for the internet postings later this week, Simple Care. How do you like that? You see, because we're simple church. So we're just kind of bringing that thing full circle. Yeah, Simple Care. And this is something that our church really does well. I don't know if you've noticed that, but there's some really tangible, special ways that our family loves this church family. And if I can just spend a few minutes, I wanna share some of them with you. Just a few ways that our family loves. When you walked in the door this morning, did somebody say hello to you? Somebody who looks like they they really cared that you were here, that they're happy that you're here, made you feel welcome, comfortable, that hospitality station, we have people who, who give of their time because they want people to feel welcome, comfortable, like you're part of the family. We've got the info desk right out here. People who know the ins and outs who can help get you plugged in as you come into this family and you want to get more engaged, those are the people to go talk to because they care about connecting people. I don't know if you noticed some dudes walking around in some red shirts and also some undercover dudes. They're out there, yeah. (laughs) Security. I'm thankful for people who stand guard by the door so we can worship and not have to worry. And I hate that that's the world that we live in, that we have to worry about that kind of nonsense, but it is. And I'm thankful for the men who are willing to stand guard to keep us safe. Our kids check in, helping people get their their broods to where they need to go. Oh my goodness, we got three little ones. Y'all know, it's real. And the kids, workers, the people who, especially when we're just having the one service, they don't get to be in here with us because they're loving and shepherding our kids. They're teaching them the truth about Jesus and they're showing them the love of Jesus by taking time with them. Our worship team, They get here early, y'all, and this most certainly involves uh, the beautiful people sitting up in the booth. Thank you all for coming early, for, for bringing your hearts, for bringing a spirit of excellence in music, but also just for the hearts to connect the family with Jesus. 
our ushers who are always ready to make sure we have enough chairs to receive the offering, your grandpa would be so proud. We do not collect offering. We receive the gifts that people want to give. (laughs) Hi, Grandpa Brandon. (laughs) There's a team that I'm especially fond of, the Next Steps team. The people who are ready to meet with anyone Who's, who needs prayer, who needs encouragement, who wants to visit about how to take their next step with Jesus, they're always available at the end of the service right back here. Our youth ministry, Taylor. I don't know if y'all have picked up on it. We have a beautiful community and family that has formed in our youth ministry and in our 56ers team, and I, I hate that Katie and Mitch are sick. They've shepherded that group so well. Our women's Bible study. You can tell that Amanda Howard has poured some love and time and intentionality into that group. Our men's group Bible study. Michael, we're we're a little bit later to the party, but we're getting there. Every other Thursday night, I'm sitting with a group of dudes who are talking about real stuff, encouraging each other, helping pick each other up and point each other to Jesus. I wish I could tell you about some ways that our church loves each other. Our Thursday cleaning group. This is a neat little group that's just kind of sprung up that makes my heart really happy. At Thursdays at 1.30, we're just cleaning the church. (laughs) And let me tell you what, we're having a ball doing it. Some beautiful people pitching in to help just take care of our church. And we're having a lot of fun doing it. And this church is cleaner than it's been in a hot minute. Can I be real with y'all? When we have special events, I don't know if you notice how much work we do just to have fun together, to get to be together, the things that get set up, and like Kevin and Andrew out there cooking hot dogs a few weeks ago, all I had to do was eat hot dogs and sit in a dunk tank, man, I had it easy. (laughs) Y'all are the real deal, loving and serving each other so we could have a fun event, so that we could show our community, hey, we're here, and we're having fun, and we care, and we love each other. Crises. I've been with this church for about a year and three or four months now, and I've gotten to watch some families walk through some major stuff, and I've had the privilege of walking alongside, but I've also seen you all walking alongside, the church being the church. I know of many families who realize that this is the church family for them because of how they were loved by this family walking through some stuff. Or when there's a, a new baby or a celebration of life, we, we jump into meeting these practical needs like setting up the meal trains, taking care of those just everyday things that you could easily lose sight of. I wish I could tell you about how this church family loves each other. <laughs> I bet you I'm missing some. Those are just the few that I was able to think of off the top of my head and write down last night. And guys, it's not that we're perfect. We're not. <laughs> What's the old saying? If you, if you find a perfect church, leave so you don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> but simple church, we're on the right path. We are. We really, really are. Zoe, can we go back to that Galatians 6 passage? Because we're on the right path, because we're on the way, let's not get tired of doing what's good. Keep going. Keep loving. Keep serving. Keep on loving because he first loved us. Church isn't about me. It's not about what I get out of it. It's not about you. It's not about what you get out of it. Church is about us being together in the love of Jesus, and it's about him. It's his church. So let's not get tired of doing what is good, because you know what, church? The harvest is coming. The more we can dig into Jesus, walking in step with the Spirit, and loving each other, the sooner we're going to be ready for the harvest God really wants to bring us, for the ministry that God really wants to do in and through this church family. And let me tell you the truth. 
if you aren't part of loving and serving in this church family, you're not just missing the mark of what God calls each Christ follower to do, you're just plain missing out. There's so much more to church than showing up for an hour, getting some entertainment and encouraging word, and then going about your day. If you're not plugged in, get plugged in. Because this is where the life is. This is where the joy is and the encouragement. Dig in. When we joined Simple Church, like I said, a year and a few months ago, the two places where my wife Miranda, hi, this is my wife Miranda, hi, um, where she really started to feel plugged in and connected as a family were from serving in kids in the women's ministry. And you know what? It just takes time, it takes intention, and that's okay. It's okay that it doesn't just happen overnight. We don't just walk in and all of a sudden know everybody and everybody knows us. But it does happen. She feels really, really connected now, and so do I. And I'm really thankful for that, and that's a gift. And there's some people in here that I, I want to get more connected with. It's not, it's not that we're perfect. It's not that we've arrived. But church, we're on the right path. So let's not get tired of doing what's good. We're on the right path, Simple Church. And I just wanted to encourage you with that today. Can I pray for us? Almighty God, thank you for this church family. Thank you for the gift of getting to share life together. It seems like in America, we're so busy and we're so isolated. And Jesus, that's not your desire for us at all. We're meant to live in community. We're meant to live in a family. Father, forgive us for treating your church like a commodity. Forgive us for being consumers of your church. Help us love because you first loved us. Help us dig in to loving and serving and being a true part of this family that you've called together, this truly special family that I'm so thankful for and that I love so much. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving us and thank you for showing us a better way. Help us step in it and walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, thank you for stopping by today. We'd love for you to be a part of our family at one of our services at 9 or 11 on Sunday. You can find out all of our information at simplechurchtulsa.com. And we'd love to pray for you any way we can. So please message us and we hope you have a great week.